principally, I believe, is a bank is a right, it is not a privilege. Okay, we need a bank to actually live our lives. If you don't have a bank account, you're stuck. If you go and stay in a hotel, they say, can we have your car, please? They don't have a car, well, you can't stay in this hotel. You try and get on an airline without a credit card, you can't do it. You can't live a normal life without a bank account, right? So I believe a bank account is a right, it's not a privilege. The banks treat it as a privilege. That's how they play with it. No, you can't have a bank account, because we say so, right? So anybody has a right to a bank account, and TAMS has that basic facility that if you want to be a member, you can be a member. It's conditional upon the constitutional provisions agreed collectively. Yeah? Chief of amongst which is that you have to accept the common law jurisdiction. Because it's common law that has protected our interests for so long, and it's common law that has been oppressed now, and we now have statute law or government law or control law. Statutes are control tools. Common law protects our rights, statutes are our means of control. The aim is to create our own liquidity, money, and issue same to our members for our benefit. And through a true democratic process to engineer the supremacy of our liquidity over the banker's liquidity. So we're going into competition with the bankers. It's the people versus the bankers. There's more of us than there are of them. So why are we all slaves? Because we haven't got off our back shots and done anything about it. This is a process that will take place as we garner support from a growing number of people waking up to the oppression under which they are currently living. We're all awake, that's why we're here. How many people in this room have got friends and families who think they're mad? <laughs> Boy, it's consistent. You're mad, you know, conspiracy theorists, you know. And our response is, sleepy head, wake up. And they're waking up, you know, we are the sharp pencils in the box. We know we're right because we study it. Somebody said to me, 9-11, Rod, you're a conspiracy theorist. I said, oh, you're an expert on it, are you? Well, have you ever read anything about it? No. Right. I've read tons of this stuff, and I know what I'm talking about. How about you read this book? A friend of mine, he actually came for Christmas, took a book about 9-11 home. He's, he's still got it, actually. And after he read it, I said, well, he said, yeah. He said, it's compelling, isn't it? So I said, it was 9-11 inside Jefferson. Yes, it was. So these people study it, they wake up, don't they? Um, they can't stay asleep too long because it's going to hit them, right? And we got the problem of people driving around with nice cars, and nice houses, and their families, and, you know, they don't see the problem, but, you know, we're, we've been exposed one way or the other, and we realize what's coming down. They'll get it sooner or later.